Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another tour review and today we're gonna take a look at Blaster from the Kingdom line, War for Cybertron Kingdom chapter. Uh, very, very excited to have this. Um, actually, at the time he wasn't a one of my uh, favorite characters was when I was young because um, I thought he was a little forced. You know, oh, the Decepticon have a tape recorder so we're gonna need a boombox. So I thought that was kind of, I don't know, I come. It was, yeah, forced, like I said. Um, but, you know, it's uh, the character does uh, have uh, major history. Like, he was prominent in Season 2. Uh, he, he was in the movie. And uh, he didn't die. And then he was, you know, still featured in Season 3. Alongside with his uh, mini cassette that were introduced in Season 2. Uh, this, uh, no, not Season 2, the movie, sorry. This guy only comes with uh, Eject. And uh, I wish that uh, they would release a, a four pack or a three pack or whatever pack to have all the other ones. Uh, but now they leaked um, Twin Cast with, um, I think it's Steeljaw. So I'm like, I hope Steeljaw gets reissued separately because I don't need a Twin Cast at all. Um, you know, it's great for people who want him, but uh, he's not for me. So I think I'm gonna miss out on uh, Steeljaw. We'll see. But regardless, uh, Blaster was voiced by Buster Jones, an actor I haven't covered yet and uh, that I might uh, eventually cover. Uh, but there's a lot of actors that have very small, few roles. So I might do a medley uh, at some point with uh, most of these actors, like I did with uh, my uh, woman, uh, the, vo the woman of the Transformers uh, medley, uh, which I'll link somewhere here. So I'm going to take a look at this guy and then you're going to watch it and you're going to let me know in the comment if you liked it and hopefully you will. So there you go. Before I start with the review, please check my voice acting spotlight playlist. Something I'm rather proud of. It's the main feature of my channel because the, some of the voice acting in War for Cybertron the Netflix show was so bad that it uh, prompted me to show people the good voice acting that we had back in the, the 80s. So we're going to take a look at uh, Blaster just after the uh, intro. And let's begin with uh, the accessories. Very reminiscent of G1. I remember he had a very big uh, gun in G1, uh, which I don't have, but he's a faithful, actually, I think a better representation of the gun. Like it's really nice, nicely done. I love the details. Could use more paint, of course. There's a bit of waffle, but overall, very nicely done. It's probably one of my favorite weapons of the whole line. I really like this sniper rifle. Well, it's maybe not a sniper, but it, it does look more like a sniper. But I don't think I, we've ever seen him snipe. The card, Black Arachnia, Dark Arachnia. I'm not going to miss those cards. They're cool. Maybe I'll put them in a binder and see if I'm missing anything. But, uh, you know, thank God it's Black Arachnia because she's one of the best characters there. But they could have used more. I don't know. They could have used more variety on cards. But that's just me. Actually, it's not just me. I think everybody says it. The instruction. So there you go. Are you ready? One, two, three. Very good instruction, as usual. Pause when you need it. The box. The box, the box. Um, nice artwork. Um, where's Eject? Oh, you don't have Eject on the box. That's odd choice, but okay. Anyway, here's Blaster. Uh, I have the Kingdom version, obviously, uh, but I've seen the Legacy box, and so far I'm not impressed with the Legacy boxes, but regardless. Product shots, amazing. Um, no cameos, sometimes there was. Uh, well, yeah, great box. Let's put it on the side. And Blaster, and honestly, because I have this vivid image of G1 Blaster, I thought he was gonna be bigger dollar but it makes sense i mean he's a voyager class and that's a good representation of a voyager size character paint is awesome red gray black yellow very flashy yellow 
Uh, that's gonna be fading out soon if you don't uh, put it in the dark. If you put it by a window, that's gonna fade super quickly, I'm pretty sure. But the paint is good. Uh, the details in the back, waffly, not that much. I mean, the legs, a uh, little bit here in the wrist for transformation, but not that much. And like I said before, I don't really mind uh, the waffle because when you display it, you know, front facing like most people do, it doesn't show. But yeah, Asbro cheaping out. Oh, I hit the button. So this uh, G1 you used to push down, this year just push back. And there you go. This is the home of Eject. Um, very good head sculpt. I, I I don't think he's like super cartoon accurate. Like I, he could be just I don't know a little different. I don't. There's something about it that just doesn't click with me. But I still very faithful representation of the character. Uh, the head does rotate. The arms are on a tight tension joint. 360. They'll go like this. Uh, rotation at the shoulder. Very good elbow bend. Uh, the ends don't rotate. Transformation, um, which is weird. It doesn't go inside. It goes on the outside when you transform him. Uh, so, but you know, I guess you could use that to do some weird pose. Uh, there's the 360 at the hip that we love. Uh, yep, still goes around like a Ferris wheel. Uh, split. Yeah, you can split him like a log. No problem there. And uh, you have a rotation at the hip. A 90 degree bend, not more. Uh, any other rotation? No, you have, you don't have a... Actually, this doesn't put, does it push? No, it doesn't push down. You don't have a... Uh, a heel um, but you do have a, a rocker 45 degrees about so not bad great representation of the character and when he's holding his gun there you go with the trigger finger looks pretty good and now where's oh totally forgot about eject there you go the little guy was hiding in the back um, I think I prefer the transformation of these cassette rather than uh, f uh, frenzy and rumble uh, Rumble being the blue one, and he's um, he's different um, because the head actually it just doesn't twist and then the shoulder go up around it actually goes down and then shoulder don't actually move you just you know bend well there you go on screen transformation you bend a little bit like this you flip it and you push it so it's very it's completely different and. I like it. I know a lot of people don't like Translucent. I don't mind. Uh, can't wait to see what they do with Rewind. So yeah, accessory, figure. Let's do some size comparison. So here is Blaster and Eject with Siege, Soundwave and Rumble. Also Laserbeak on the arm. Um, great scaling. I think that's on par. Of course, uh, Soundwave has all the battle damage that's famous for uh, the siege line which i don't really mind he's a good enough bot and then you can see i think the main difference is here uh that you have to it's how better the mold for the cassette bot is i mean i wish they would reissue rumble frenzy uh like uh, like this because they have a you know they don't have that little you know stud or you know uh, that's blast effect compatible thing here on the hand and it's it's it just i don't know if that's supposed to be the the pile drivers but uh, the i think it looks more it's less blocky for some reason that's i guess i don't know i like this one much better i mean i'm glad to have this but i like the uh, the big guy the the new guys uh, a little more uh but um you know um faction to faction I love to be able to display these uh, these together, and I have all the other cassettes too. So it's gonna be some uh, some fun to, to be had with the kid. The kid's gonna love that. With fellow music enthusiast Jazz, uh, voiced by Scatman Crutters, check my review on him. It's cool to have these two together. With episode mate Trax, who's been kikied like no tomorrow to fix those legs, and I tried to apply the leg fix from Larkin, and it's not working. Anyway, uh, he's good to stand on the shelf. 
mellow kind of place. My kind of place. And Titan Return Windcharger for no reason at all. And I'm not even sure if it's Titan Returns, Power of the Prime, or Combiner Wars. But anyway, Windcharger. All right, so I've already showed you transformation for this guy. So we're going to set it on the side here. All right, cover your receptors, Perceptor. And uh, now we're going to remove the gun. So what you want to do is open this up like this and then put the head in and clip it so that it, you know, completely disappears and we're done. And look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. That's an 80s, maybe even early 90s boombox. I love it. Um, the back kind of looks uh, neglected, uh, but the, the with the end will fold over the head. It's pretty good. Uh, you keep the functionality for the cassette stuff. It's great. There's, you know, a lot of speaker. Really well done. Little subwoofer on the at the bottom. Uh, the dials don't work, of course. You know, and then the skirt uh, pegs in here, and uh, it looks seamless. I mean, it's really well done. And uh, also, I didn't show the details inside, but really good. Uh, I like this mode. Like, really, there's no articulation. He's a brick. So, but the, the details and everything, it's, it's absolutely perfect. I love it. So now let's take a quick look at some size comparison. I'm just gonna leave Eject there. So here he is with Core Class Soundwave. I don't have Netflix Soundwave and I didn't wanna, I wanted to do a, you know, boombox to cassette tape uh, comparison. Uh, my Soundwave has been enhanced with Toy Hacks decals. Of course, it's not the money shot that everybody wants to take with both, uh, both modes, but I'm really happy with uh, with this figure. And uh, I have the Siege one to go when I'm in robot mode. So, you know, that's really good enough for me. So that's the size comparison with Core Class Soundwave. I've been waiting a long time for this. You poor excuse for sound system. On talk, no shock. Uh, Siege Red Alert with, I think that's the extra gun from uh, Netflix Deep Cover. It just, it's my son's figure, but I put the guns on him so that he doesn't lose it. And Siege, Starscream. Well, is that a wrap or will he be back? So there we go at the end and I absolutely adore this figure. I originally didn't think that I wanted it because Blaster was never a favorite character of mine. Because like I said in my intro, I always felt that he was forced because, you know, the Decepticon had Soundwave, so, you know, we needed something to compete. And maybe there was something for Asbro, it's like, all right, Soundwave is selling really, really good, let's do another one. That makes sense. Business-wise, you want to use as much as you can and learn from what you already have success with and then replicate that. So that makes sense. But uh, character-wise, he was actually a good character on the show. Um, he did some good spotlight episode. He's one of the few, again, that did season two, the movie, and then season three also had some uh, exposure. So, you know, kudos for that. And uh, the voice actor, Buster Jones, uh, is uh, a, lot, a lot of people really liked him. So uh, overall, great figure, great representation of the character. I'm super happy to have him in my collection. He's going to go in my season two shelf because that's when uh, he started. And that's pretty much it for, uh, for this figure. Uh, I recommend it if you want, uh, if you can still find it uh, in the kingdom box, uh, pick him up or wait for the legacy to come out. I think it's already out anyway. So there you go. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I love reading those. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care!